Hey guys, Chris Alde here again. I'm really excited about this new project I've been working on. It's a 3D printed alternator. It's another one of my educational pieces that goes along with my educational brake caliper I did some months back. So here it is. This is one to one scale Chevrolet Bosch alternator. It's uh, been a really exciting project for me. You can pull this entire thing apart. I've got over 30 pages of documentation on this alternator. If you want to know what's going on on the inside of an alternator, this is a project for you. So without further ado guys, let's head over to the workbench, pull this apart, and see what's all in the inside. Again, thanks for checking this out. There will be links in the description for my educational brake caliper, as well as the PDF documentation on the printed alternator. Alright guys, you've made it over. So let's uh, get started on this alternator. The first step is we've got these external components that we need to get off. We've got the nut, pulley, and fan. So let's go ahead first and pull off the nut. This is a quarter turn design that holds the external accessories on. So with a quick quarter turn, the nut comes off. Next up, we've got the pulley in orange. And last, we've got the fan. So go ahead and pull that off. And fan spacer. There we go. So now we've got everything internal on the alternator cases. So let's go ahead and pull off the M5 hardware that's holding the cases together. And we'll set those aside. Alright, so now that you've got your M5 hardware off, you can now pull the upper case apart. And you'll notice here, you've got your bearing retainer, and just inside there, the white bearing is also in place. So we can go ahead and pull that off. It slides off, and the bearing comes out. There you go. So now we can set the upper case to the side. Alright, next up, we can pull the main rotor out. There we go. And the next piece, let's go ahead and pull the stator off. So if you take a look inside now, you can see we've still got the electronic components in the back case, as well as the back bearing. So let's go ahead and pull the back bearing out next. There it is. And we'll pull out the electronics. There we go. There's our electronics. Here's our back case. And that's it for disassembly of the alternator. So let's have a look at each component. So here we've got the stator and you've got your windings. This is what provides your three phase in the alternator. You can read more about what exactly three phase is in my documentation, link in the description. But there you go, you've got your stator and you've got your windings in red. Next up we've got the rotor. The rotor's got claws, as you can see here, alternating all the way around. And these are what help generate the AC current. You'll also notice that there is a fan on the rotor. This is to help draw cool air through the alternator cases and cool the internal components. So if you'll notice, there's numerous holes in the back case all over the place, as well as the upper case. There's three big windows, and those help pull air through with this fan on the rotor, as well as what we've seen earlier, the front fan. They work together to help draw air all the way through the, the, uh, the alternator and cool it. So there you go. We've also got the slip rings on the rotor here. And these work with the brushes that you can see here in, in bronze on the electronics board. So these brushes actually have springs in the back in, in the physical, the real alternator. Uh, the 3D printing it was a lot tougher to get that. As you can see, these brushes will actually ride on the slip rings here. So if you want to learn more about how these first three components work together, check out the documentation. It goes into great detail over it. So you'll notice here on the electronics board, we've also got the regulator. The regulator works to basically regulate the voltage that goes to your automotive battery. 
it's typically around 14.2 to 14.6 in that range and that's to, to, to actually charge your battery. If the regulator was to send your battery 12 volts, um, not, that your battery is in and around 12 volts to begin with, it wouldn't be able to charge. That's why it actually puts out over 12 volts and closer to 14.2, 14.6, somewhere in that range. And that's how it has more voltage than your current battery state and allows it to charge. You'll notice on this side, we've got the rectifier. Now the rectifier actually works with the diodes that are in here and they help to convert alternating current into DC current which is suitable for your vehicle electronics. So that's uh, the rectifier and that's what it does in uh, its most simplest form. And then again we've got what we discussed earlier, the fan. This is the external fan that helps draw air into the case along with the rotor fan. And then here we've got the pulley. This is what links your alternator to your vehicle's engine. So on your engine you'll have a belt that runs off the engine all the way over to the alternator and that helps spin the alternator and generate the current that you need to charge your battery. And then we've got the bearing retainer. This is a, a, a very basic piece that slides onto your upper case and helps lock the, the upper bearing into the upper case during assembly and disassembly. So that's it guys. That's the basics of the inside of the alternator. If you're curious about what's actually happening between all the components of the alternator, I strongly encourage you to check out the documentation I did on this project. This is made to be an educational piece. This video is simply just to go over all the components, what the alternator looks like, assembled, disassembled, and the individual components. Again, I strongly uh, encourage you to check out the documentation. There's a lot of it. It's going to go through all details on this alternator. And by the end of it, you're going to know exactly what's going on with all these components. So, let's reassemble this alternator and finish up the video. One of the first steps in reassembly is to take your uppercase. The reason I like to do the uppercase first is due to the bearing and the bearing retainer. You want to get that stuff done before you assemble everything because you won't have access to this upper bearing once you assemble the cases. So let's go ahead and grab the upper bearing. The upper bearing is, is a bit, little bit larger than the lower bearing as well as the inside diameter is quite a bit larger. So that's your upper bearing. Go ahead and drop that in and grab your bearing retainer. This will need to be semi-flexible when you print it. Uh, PLA will do it, ABS as well. So you want to set that over the case, get two edges hooked on, and then flex that third edge, and then push it down, and you've got yourself a snap fit. There you go, upper bearings in, we can go ahead and set this aside. And let's grab the back case. And the only bearing we've got left, the back bearing. Let's go ahead and drop that in. There we go. Next up, we'll take the electronics board. So when 3D printed, what I've done is put pegs, one, two, three, and a square peg here as well. That's to help locate the electronics board in the back case. Normally, that would be screwed in or there'd be a different system of mounting. This is a, a 3D printed method to keep it super simple. So let's go ahead and line that up and drop it in. I like to line it up with the electrical connector here and get that into this big square opening there and your pin should fit perfectly. There we go, dropped in and aligned. So now you'll see your brushes are ready for the slip ring on the rotor and your regulator is set there with the elect electrical plug facing out and your rectifier is also sitting in there. So next up I like to do the stator. So you want to set this ring here on the back case and that uh, will make sure the stator is in the right location. There we go. That's fitted right in there. Now we can grab the rotor and drop it in and find that back bearing. Once you get it, it'll, there it is. It'll drop right in and now you've got it set perfectly. That's basically it for the internal components of the stator. We can now grab the upper case and fit it to the back case. Along with our M5 hardware, we can bolt this thing together. I like to keep these finger tight when assembling my alternator. There's really no need for it to be any tighter. This is simply just to hold the front and back cases together. 
Now, if you're curious what hardware this is, they're M5. They're about 75 mil or 3 inch, as well as an M5 nut. And uh, I've got, I go through the whole hardware list in the documentation. There's really not much to it. It's mostly all 3D printed. So let's go ahead and get this last nut on. There we go. So now the front case is attached to the back case with the hardware and it's all done. So we can go ahead and do a spin test. Ah, it's working great. So now let's go ahead and put the external pieces together. So first off you want to put your fan spacer on. Drop that down the rotor shaft. That's just to keep your fan away from this upper case. Now you'll notice with my rotor design and the 3D printed design of this alternator, I've actually got a slot down the rotor here. Now that's to locate the fan, the pulley, and the nut so that you can, you can actually turn your alternator and have everything spin with it. I've done that due to the fact that the alternator accessories on the outside are put together and locked in by this nut. Uh, it's a different system on the car's alternator. For 3D printing there was a change made. So when you're assembling your last three external components make sure you line them up with that slot there on the rotor and you'll notice there's actually another slot here and that's for your quarter turn nut at the end all right so let's go ahead and grab the fan this is the correct orientation for the fan blades down and we'll line up the pin here with that rotor slot drop that down same with the pulley we've also got a pin in here so we're going to line that up and slide that down as well and lastly we'll put the nut on and there's a pin buried in there, a little hard to see. Slide that down, and then we do our quarter turn. There we go. That's locking everything in. So it's working perfect. Let's do another spin test. Excellent. It's working perfect. It's a little bit tighter due to the way that the nut locks in, but that is excellent. Feels really good, really smooth. And look at that. It's a working model. So there it is, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. So be sure to check out my educational brake caliper and all the other work I've done with this project. I'm really excited about it and uh, stay tuned to see what's next from Chris. And stay tuned. There's uh, more excellent educational products coming. Thanks guys.